now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, we are not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern Anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try Anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You will be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for Anison today. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. It began in a dank green world of fetid, rotting vegetation, a world of oppressive heat, of loathsome insects, and of even more loathsome disease. Strange that that should have been the setting for a silent, deadly battle for the souls and minds of men. Dr. Maddox has been murdered. That's right, Ken. Sorry to hit you with news like that about an old friend on your first day back from Calcutta. Where did that happen, Chief? In a little village called Belterra, up the Amazon River in Brazil. Hmm. What was he doing there? Establishing a new medical clinic? Yeah. You knew, of course, that he was working with the Institute of Inter-American Affairs, cooperating with the Brazilian government. Yeah. Trying to stamp out disease, malnutrition. So somebody killed him. Chief, it's an old pattern. We've been running into it all over the Americas. Wherever we're getting strategic materials. And it's not coincidence. You think Dr. Maddox's death is tied up with a plan to sabotage our defense efforts? What do you think? Hmm. Maybe you're right, Ken. After all, rubber is a pretty vital material these days. So are human lives. Oh, well, you'll hear from me, Chief. From Brazil. <laughs> Lucky you got here when you did, Mr. Thurston. The boat going up river to Belterra is ready to leave. It's a pretty sudden trip for you, isn't it, Dr. Northrop? I understood you were slated for a return to the States. I was, but they had to have a replacement for Dr. Maddock in a hurry. I'd been his assistant, was familiar with the territory. Oh, well, that makes sense. One of the few things about this affair that does. Look, Thurston, I'm going to be frank. You came to me with some pretty authoritative letters from the Institute and the Brazilian government. So I'm taking you along with me. But I don't like any part of it. Why don't you? Because there's liable to be trouble on the Amazon. The native rubber workers aren't very happy with North Americans right now. Somebody could get hurt. Well, you sound pretty solicitous about my welfare. I don't give a hang about your welfare, but I do care about those poor devils in the jungle, hag-ridden for centuries by disease and malnutrition. There's a full-time, 24-hour-a-day job waiting for me in Belterra as a doctor. I won't have any time to play wet nurse to you. Why not wait until you're asked? Sometimes a man facing a gun doesn't have time to ask. Is that a threat or a warning? Let's call it a statement of fact. 
There's the riverboat. Are you still coming with me? After the fascinating picture you painted, how could I turn back now? Okay, Thurston. Let's get aboard. I'll let the captain know we're ready to shove off. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Thurston. What? Welcome on board, my amigo friend. <laughs> I bet you're happy to see me here, eh, Mr. Egg? Hey, what? What are you doing here? Well, naturally, when I heard that your old friend Dr. Maddock got himself bumped out, I, I, I just had to offer my sympathy. So you called the Bureau and called Miss Brooks into telling you where I was going? <laughs> well, can I help it if, if she likes my ass? Oh, okay. But this trip, you're on your own. Oh, sure. And all expenses, including burial, come out of your own pocket. Well, Natch, believe me, Mr. Thurston, I'll be happy to pay for my own burial. Yeah. The natives up the river are shrinking heads again. They are? Might be interesting to see how, how yours turns out. Hmm, come to think of it, it might be an improvement. Well, thank you, Mr. Huh? See you around, Pagan. Oh, sure, sure. I'll see you. Shrunken heads. See how mine turns out. Might be him an improvement. Oh, 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 Mr. Rex! <laughs> There's our clinic, Thurston. Everything seems peaceful enough right now, Northrop. Oh, sure, sure it does. Hey, uh, maybe there won't be no trouble uh, over here after all, eh, Mr. Thurston? The Amazon jungle doesn't announce its deadliness, Elsmit. It, uh, it doesn't? Rhea could be dead inside there, and the setting would be just as serene. That's a cheerful thought. Who is Maria? Maria Costello. She was Dr. Maddox's nurse. And she's been up here alone ever since Maddox was killed? Maria has a way with the natives. Unfortunately, the same doesn't hold true for you. Hey, what about me? Not even my Uncle Ahmed was in here. That's from the clinic. Come on. Be right with you, Mr. Thurston, as soon as I tie my shoelaces. No, no, I will not let you kill my filio. My baby, I will kill you all first. Kill you all. That is nonsense, Luis. We are not trying to hurt your son. Only to keep him from dying. Maria, what is going on here? What were those shots? Vilas. No, Dr. Northrup. It was not I. Our old friend Luis was a bit upset. I had to take his gun away from him. There are other pistolas, Senor Villas. You cannot take them all. If my baby dies, you all die. You understand? You all die. Mm. Sounds like he meant that. I can assure you that he did, Senor. Uh... My name's Ken Thurston. Uh, Thurston, this is Ferdinand Villas, manager of the rubber plantations. Uh, Senor. And this is Maria Castello, my nurse. Senor Hello. Thurston. Do you always find the practice of medicine here as exciting as this, Senorita Castello? Oh, I cannot understand it. His wife brought their infant child here. He was due for his smallpox vaccination. And then Luis broke in with that gun, threatened to kill me if I even touched the child. But you certainly vaccinated children here before. Hundreds of them. Well, there must be explanation for this. The natives here have developed a great distrust of all Americanos del Norte, Senor Thurston. They say that they are bringing death to the Amazon. Death with their shiny medicinal needles. That's superstitious nonsense, Vilas. Where are the mother and child now, Maria? In the examining room, Doctor. It is really most urgent that I vaccinate the child. A smallpox epidemic has broken out upriver. All right, Maria. Take care of it at once. Very well, Dr. Northrop. I do not think that was very wise, Dr. Northrop. Oh? Why not, Senor Vilas? You superstitious, too? Merely realistic. Luis is the head man of the village. If anything should happen to his child, I'm afraid there will be a great deal of danger to all of us. Hello, Maria. Huh? Oh, <laughs> it is you, Senor Thurston. You mind if I share the riverbank with you? Please do. Thanks. You seem a little tired tonight. Too much work at the clinic? Oh, no, senor. The work, I love it. It, uh, it was this afternoon, I think, that upset me. Oh, that's understandable. Oh, but that is just the point, senor. It is not understandable. Oh, why not? The natives were never like this before. Sullen, hostile, threatening. They, they worship Dr. Maddock. What caused the change, Maria? His murder? 
Are you certain you do not know, Senor X? Uh, well, I didn't realize Pagan was getting around that fast. Oh, you mean the strange little man who came up river with you? No. No, he did not tell me. It was Dr. Maddock. Dr. Merritt? Yes. The night before he was killed, he spoke to me about you. He said that you were the only man he knew who could handle the situation down here and that he was going to write to you concerning it. That's all he said? That was all. But uh, I will make a guess as to what he had in mind. Okay, go ahead. Someone is stirring up the trouble among the natives. Someone who is interested in preventing rubber from reaching the United States. Someone who wishes to turn the Americas against each other for the benefit of his own country. Who is he, Maria? I do not know. Huh. Care to make another guess? Mr. Thurston, for you, Mr. Thurston. Ah, uh, it is late, senor, and I am tired. Mr. Thurston, are you out here somewhere? That's all you have to say, Maria? That is all. Mr. Thurston, are you... Uh, oh, there you are. I was wondering. Oh, hello, baby. Good night, Senor Thurston. Atea vista. Hey, what's your hurry, baby? Why don't you stick around a while and... Hmm. How do you like that? A brush up. <laughs> After the way she went for me in Lisbon. Lisbon? Oh, sure. I ran into her during the war. Boy, she knew more military secrets... <laughs> a regular Hatamari. <laughs> Is that you, Senor Thurston? That's right, Vilas. I thought you'd gone back to the rubber plantation. No. I wish to speak with you first. About what? Northrop tells me you came here with papers from the Brazilian government. Is that true? Go on. Someone in authority must persuade Maria and Northrop that their tactics with the natives will lead only to disaster. They are antagonizing the natives. The incident of the baby this afternoon is a case in point. Well, somebody's got a cart before a horse, Phyllis. The natives were worked up before this afternoon. Before Dr. Merrick's murder. That is unimportant. Is it? What matters is that they are worked up. To such a pitch that the slightest spark will bring about an explosion. And if anything happens to that baby of Luis... Believe me, Senor Thurston, our lives will not be... Senor. Came from that hut. Come on. But that is Dr. Northrop's hut. Yeah. Here. There he is, Senor. A wound in the shoulder. Northrop, what happened? That... That devil, Luis Mendoza, shot me. Luis? You are certain? I saw him clearly enough. He gave no warning? Did not say why? No, Nothing. You're wrong, Northrop. He did tell you why. Look. Here beside the door. Madre de Dios. What is it, Thurs? Venus, what are you staring at? Luis Mendoza's baby. Dead. continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Tagliavini, the great Italian tenor, toast of two continents, can be enjoyed whenever you choose to hear him on RCA Victor Red Seal Records. Yes, now you can hear the superb new album, Neapolitan Folk Songs, beautifully sung by Tagliavini, and brilliantly recorded by RCA Victor in all three record speeds. This wonderful album is available now at your record dealers. And it will be a magnificent addition to your record library, these Red Seal records, you'll want to own and play over and over again. You'll hear Taliavini's warm lyric tenor in all its natural magnificence as he sings these beloved, sun-drenched Italian folk songs. Taliavini's incomparable bel canto has never sounded better than in his unforgettable performance of the album Neapolitan Folk Songs. Taliavini has been hailed by critics the world over, acclaimed by audiences everywhere. Now you can buy his exciting new RCA Victor Red Seal album. Ask your RCA Victor dealer for your album copy of Neapolitan Folk Songs, sung by the one and only Tagliabini. And 
now we return to The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. <laughs> Ken Thurston is in a small native village far up the Amazon River, trying to determine the motive behind the murder of Dr. Maddock. But even more sinister than the surrounding jungle are the unseen forces at work there, fomenting hatred against the United States, threatening to disrupt the rubber production, plotting a native uprising that will mean death to all the foreign devils who've trespassed there. It is now some 15 minutes after the attack on Dr. Northrop and the discovery of the dead native baby. But it is not possible, senores. I tell you, that smallpox vaccine could not have killed that child. That's not entirely true, Maria. But there's always the remote possibility of faulty body chemistry, lack of normal antibodies. I think you are being very professional, very scientific, and completely unrealistic about the entire situation, my friends. You mean the attack on Northrop? And what's liable to follow? But of course, that attack was a warning that the natives are rising against us. That is what matters, not how the baby died. You're wrong, Vilas. Wrong? How can you doubt that we are all in danger now? I don't. And the way the baby died proves it. What kind of double talk is that, Thurston? Did you or Maria examine the child's body? I... no. We were too busy with my shoulder. Well, you should have. The vaccine wasn't the cause of death. It was botulism. Botulism? Yeah. The deadliest kind of food poisoning. But that is not possible, Senor Thurston. The child had not been weaned. A breastfed child could not possibly have died from botulism. Unless... That's right, Maria. Unless it was deliberately poisoned. Look, Mr. X... Why do we have to go sightseeing in a rubber plantation at this time of night anyways? It's your idea to come along with me, Pagong. Go on back alone if you don't like it. I don't like that idea even better. Listen to those natives in that compound over there. I'll bet they're already arguing about who's going to get my head for their mantelpiece. Could be. Ooh. Hey, what's this place? The rubber plantation laboratory. Villas gave me the key. Let's go in. What am I looking for here, anyways? Wheelers told me he'd turn part of this lab over to the clinic. Northrop's using it until they get their own built. So what? Look here. You mean those, those funny glass bottles with that stuff inside? That stuff happens to be cultures. This one looks like rabbit's blood. This, yeah, probably based on a... Beef broth. Beef broth. Very interesting. So let's get out of here now before before somebody comes in and looking for heads or something. Okay, there's a plantation speedboat over at the dock. Take it down river to the clinic at Monte Alegre. I'll give you a list of things to pick up and bring back here. Believe me, I'm practically there already. You know, sooner. Huh? Bring some stuff back. That's right. Oh, what a joke. I wouldn't come back for a million bucks. How about uh, 50? I'll take it. You must be crazy, Thurston, letting Zell Smith take that speedboat. Those natives are liable to move against us at any time. Dr. Northrop is right. You have taken away our only means of escaping from here. Looks like it, Vilas, doesn't it? Why are you so casual about the situation, Senor Thurston? What did you learn at the laboratory earlier this evening? Don't you know, Maria? How could I? Well, maybe the same way you learned I was there. When only Vilas knew I was going. Or is there another answer? Have you thought of the obvious one, Senor? That I followed you there to learn for myself what is going on? I thought of it. What the devil is all this talk about the laboratory? What's that got to do with the spot we're in? Everything, Northrop. I learned that we're not in a spot. Unless someone in this room wants us to be. That is a rather strange statement to make, Senor Thurston. Is it? Somebody murdered Dr. Maddock, then poisoned that little child to stir up those natives. Now, why? Why? Well, there is no answer. Uh, None of it makes any sense. No. No, that is not so, Dr. Northrop. There are some very obvious answers. To stop the production of rubber. To naturalize against one another. Now I see what you mean, Senor Thurston. Only one of us could have had the opportunity to do all these things. That's right, Vilas. Well, I, 
I, I can't believe it. You, you two are actually serious about all this. Of course they are serious, Doctor. But they have left one thing unsaid. The name of the person who is responsible. Just who do you have in mind, Senor Thurston? Suppose the three of you work it over for a while. Oh, and uh, let me know how you come out, will you? I'm going to get some sleep. Someone. Wait. I'll that knife. Let's have it, one. Drop it. Drop it. Yeah. That's better. Now, suppose you tell me who. Oh. What the? You all right, Thurston? No, sir. I hope I didn't nick you. I had to snap him off in that split second when you shoved him away. Why? Why? Well, for Pete's sake, man, he, he was trying to kill you. After he dropped the knife? But he was Luis Mendoza's brother. He, he was after you to avenge the baby's death. Oh, you're having a little trouble making a diagnosis tonight, Northrop. If he was after someone because of that, he'd have gone for you or Maria, not me. But th th there must have been some reason for his attack on you. Sure. Someone ordered him to kill me. Someone ordered him to... But who? I might have found out, Northrop. You hadn't been so fast on the trigger. <laughs> You brought the stuff back with you? Oh, sure, sure. So pay me off and let me get out of here, will you, please? Believe me, I'm a sick man. And, and the longer I'm here, the sicker I get. Then you better come along to the clinic, Pagan. I think I've got a cure for what ails you. Well... Going somewhere, Dr. Northrup? What? Oh, it, it, it's you, Thurston. Uh, yes, uh, we're leaving. Uh, uh, Zellschmidt came back with that speedboat just in time. The natives? That is right, senor. I have learned that they intend to strike here at the clinic just before dawn. Oh. Oh, I wonder how we'll make out. What do you mean, make out? We will not be here, then. I wouldn't be too sure, Maria. Take a look at Pagan, will you, Northrup? Zellschmidt? Why, of course. Hey, why do you want to him to look at me for? There's nothing wrong with me that, that a quick trip to Rhea won't fix up. I'm afraid you're wrong, Zellschmidt. Huh? You mean I, I got something? Smallpox. S smallpox? Oh, oh no, no. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> thought postpones that trip downriver, doesn't it? Looks like it. I can't risk anyone else being exposed to him. We'll have to stay here until the infectious stage is over. But we cannot do that, Doctor. The natives... Sorry, Maria. There's no other answer. Perhaps there is, Senor Thurston. Allow me to remain here with him while the three of you go downriver. I didn't know you were such a self-sacrificing creature, Vilas. I am not. Merely realistic. After all, the responsibility of the plantations and the inhabitants of Belterra is mine. Suppose we let Maria go and the rest of us stick around. How about it, Maria? Do you know how to run the speedboat? I am more familiar with administering smallpox vaccines, Senor Thurston. And I believe Dr. Northrop is about to prescribe vaccinations for all of us here. I will stay. Okay. At least we'll have the satisfaction of knowing that we won't die of smallpox. Oh! Oh! Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me! Quiet, you idiot. It doesn't hurt. All right, Vilas, you're next. The rest of us are through. If you do not mind, I will forego the pleasure. There's no time to waste joking, Vilas. He's not joking, Northrop. What? You are right, Thurston. As a realistic man, I have a very healthy fear of Bacillus botulinus. Of course. Bacillus who? Botulism. What the baby died of. Yes, Maria. And what all of you are about to die from very shortly. Oh, what does he mean? What does he mean? Remember those beakers <laughs> we saw in the lab, Pagon? <laughs> With the rabbit's blood, yeah. beep broth. Well, our pal Velas was cultivating death in him. Bacillus botulinus. The vaccine. We gave it to the baby and he died of botulism. 
Vilas must have introduced the culture into all the vaccines. Sure. He was doing a pretty good job for the cunt that was paying him. Stirring up anti-American feeling. Sabotaging that rubber plant production. Vilas. But why did you kill Dr. Maddock? Because he was on to you? Yes, that is quite right, Thurston. I am certain you will all excuse me now if I leave. I cannot bear the sight of suffering. And they tell me that death from botulism is quite painful. Goodbye, comrades. Senor Thurston. Oh, we're going to die. We're going to die. Okay, don't relax. <laughs> you haven't got smallpox. And there's nothing wrong with that vaccine. <laughs> Jokes, he cracks at the time like this. <laughs> No, nothing wrong. I cooked up the smallpox diagnosis with Northrop just to trap Vilas. But the vaccine, Senor Thurston. Fresh, untampered stuff. That's why I sent Pagon to Monte Alegre. He brought it back with him. It worked out as you figured, Thurston. I'll hand it to you for that. But what about Vilas? He's getting away. I don't think so, Northrop. I had Luis Mendoza listening at the window. He heard enough to learn the truth. He'll take care of Vilas. Oh. You know... Vilas said he was being realistic. <laughs> but he wasn't. He was living in a bad dream. A nightmare of terror and conquest and murder. The only thing realistic about it... <gasps> Mr. Rex. Yes. Come on, Pedro. <laughs> Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Say, uh, Bing, how are you planning to spend Father's Day this Sunday? Oh, Ken, Father's Day is quite a deal, you know, at the Crosby Menage. I get to sleep as late as I want to. Then the kids bring me a big breakfast in bed, ham and eggs, cereal, waffles, pancakes, sausage. Then uh, what do you do when you get up? What else? I wash the dishes. <laughs> well, I know one gift that'll be on that breakfast tray, Bing. Right you are, Ken. A carton of mild Chesterfields. Folks, we have a fine new Chesterfield gift carton this year, and it's just the thing for Dad on Father's Day. It's got a picture of Godfrey on it and a place to write your greetings, and inside, 200 of those milder Chesterfields. Remember, Chesterfields gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, and that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. So drop around your favorite dealers and pick up a gift carton. Sure, Dad's a great guy, and Chesterfield's a great smoke. It's a natural. For Father's Day and any day, it's Chesterfield. Here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to B. Benedict, Will Wright, Carlton Young, Harry Bartell, and Byron Kane. Next week, Vienna, where an ex-wrestler, a beautiful girl, and a spot of printer's ink all add up to real trouble for Ken. And, of course, where there's real trouble, there'll always be Leon Belasco's Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in the life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. NBC.